This is the seventh video in a series pointing out 100 of the slanderous lies and misrepresentations found in the Amazon docuseries Shiny Happy People Duggar Family Secrets in chronological order as they appeared in the program. For more details and evidence about each lie and misrepresentation individually, please see the other videos on this channel. So we're now still in episode 3 up to number 64. When I was about 10 years old, my family really shattered apart. My father molested me. Emily was not ever sexually abused by her father. There is plenty of evidence of this that is detailed in the five-part series on this channel about Emily Anderson. Since I don't have time in this video to repeat all the information about that, please see the series for details. A lot of people ask me if my mother was aware of the abuse going on. She knew our family was in great danger, but my mother was in a cult too. This particular claim points to her mother as a willing participant in allowing Emily to be abused because she was in a cult, referring to IBLP. Neither Emily or her mother ever said that she was being abused by her father to Mr. Gothard, and numerous written communications between Mr. Gothard and Emily's mom and Emily herself show this to be the case. Sexual abuse was not claimed until after she started interacting with the people involved in a lawsuit against IBLP and Gothard, where she was seeking half a million dollars. Again, all this information is detailed in the five-part series on Emily's lies. When Bill first spotted me, I was 13 years old and he was 71. He asked as soon as I turned 14 for me to quit homeschool, to move up to Chicago and live at headquarters indefinitely. This claim is a complete mischaracterization. In a series of clips in Shiny Happy People and on numerous other interviews other than Shiny Happy People, Emily says Gothard picked her out of crowds of thousands of people and fixated on her. She also claims that he was grooming her for six years and trying to get her to come to headquarters by asking over and over again throughout that time. This is not true. Emily and her mom attended conferences yearly, but Mr. Gother didn't even remember her from one year to the next. She was one of many young people he invited to be a part of the youth programs, both young ladies and young men. He didn't know her personally at all until she was crying in a hallway and he tried to help her. Emily tries to suggest that they had an ongoing relationship through those years. That is simply untrue. She is caught in one interview where she admits he didn't even know who she was and she had to reintroduce herself each time they met. You can see that clip in the other videos I've mentioned that you can find in the links below. Journey to the Heart was a 10 day camp Mr. Gothard would be there teaching these like lessons throughout the day. Every person that came on a journey to the heart had a meeting with him, every single person. Journey to the heart seems to me like a vetting process for like which types do I like to invite for further long-term things. Like learn more about their vulnerabilities because you're gonna learn those things through an interview. Derek Dillard has never had a conversation at all with Bill Gothard, has not met him, and does not know anything about his motives. Yet here, he takes the idea of Mr. Gothard spending time with each individual camper to try to give them personal counsel in a sinister way, suggesting it was all just to find ways to abuse them. There is no evidence whatsoever to support this claim. This is pure slander. You would get chosen to ride in Mr. Gothard's van. All of us were under 18. If you have watched this series or the five-part series I have on this channel about Laura's lies, you already know she is one of the most blatant liars in Shiny Happy People. 
The ages of the young people at the training centers ranged from mid-teens and went all the way up into their mid-twenties. But why would Laura lie about this? Because the narrative being set up here is that Bill Gothard was a pedophile. So all the young ladies he supposedly abused had to be under 18. Therefore, they had to add in this false statement to hit that mark. He would always have a girl next to him. There was always petting to heavy petting, his hand on knees, up skirts. We never talked about it. I knew it was weird, but I didn't know it was wrong. After I made the video explaining how this is a false story, which you can find on this channel, I found another video where Laura makes this same claim, but in this version, it was not in vans. It was in rooms. Again, for more details about the bucket load of lies Laura tells, including this one, see the series of videos about her on this channel. So we get down on our knees and I, I immediately do this and I'm just like all ready. And then all of a sudden I feel his hand creep up against mine and he kept rubbing his thumb across the back of my hand. Here, Lindsay Smith is describing a time when Bill Gothard prayed with her and held her hand during the prayer. She characterizes this as sexual abuse. It is not sexual abuse to hold hands while praying. There is more about this in a video I will link below. One night at headquarters, he said, um, you belong here. I love you. You know that, right? Your father doesn't love you, but I love you. He played with my hair and he rubbed my shoulders and he put his hand on my thigh. And the building was empty. Bill said, why don't you come up to my office? He took me by the hand. We started to walk through the dark hallways. This story sounds very ominous and scary, but what is purposefully hidden from the viewers is that this part of Emily's story, that he touched her thigh and held her hand walking down a dark hallway, was what she claims to have discovered years after the fact through repressed memories. Repressed memories have been shown and proven over and over again to be false memories. For more information on this, see the series about Emily on this channel. And just as we opened the door, I saw that there was still a male staff assistant sitting at the computer doing some work. And Bill was startled. He did not expect that man to be in there. It would not be a surprise in any way for there to be a staff member in Bill's office at a late hour. In fact, this was a regular and common occurrence, and the lights on at night in the office shone through a huge window to the outside where anyone could walk by and look in, as well as the three doors that went into his office that were always open. He would not be startled to see someone in there at all. The details about the office location and logistics, as well as numerous interviews with others who worked at headquarters over many years, show the idea that Bill Gothard would not be startled to see someone working late in the office. This was a false statement. I am one of many, many, many young ladies that Bill preyed upon and took advantage of. I would walk by and sometimes he'd be like, oh, I wonder who he's praying with now. But then I couldn't really bring myself to like really look in or stop and, and take a peek. Here the idea that Bill Gothard was abusing young women because he was praying with them in his office is characterized in an ominous and sinister way by using dark images and scary music. This is just using emotional manipulation to further the false narrative that praying while holding hands is abuse. There may be other young ladies who claimed he held their hand while praying. I don't know. I've talked to many women who did pray with him and he didn't do that. So far, none have come forward to say this happened to them. But I believe Lindsay and that Bill did hold her hand while they prayed. Yet the problem is that she characterizes it as abuse and therefore it is misrepresented in Shiny Happy People. 
Why does God let tragedies take place? If he allows our physical to be damaged, he just increases the spiritual power. And that's, that's a principle through scripture. They glorified being attacked. Would you rather have never been attacked and not be spiritually mighty? If you notice in the lower left corner of this clip, it says IBLP Anger Resolution Seminar. What that means is the teachings are trying to help those who have already experienced abuse and how they can overcome the feeling of helplessness and loss from it to resolve their anger. This is not suggesting it is a good thing that someone is abused. It is suggesting that if it has happened to you, you can switch your mind to conquer your anger and resentment over it and give suggestions on how to do that. To suggest that this is glorifying abuse is a total misrepresentation of the truth. And of course, Shiny Happy People does this to further the false narrative that IBLP and Gothard promote abuse generally. I'll just put a quick note in here. I don't think Heather Heath is lying here. I think she's a person who believes what she is saying, but she is mistaken in her characterization of these teachings. Next time, a story of exposure, a false rape allegation is repeated, and newsflash, the Duggars are starting their own cult. All that and more next time. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, and subscribe.